Welcome to Unit 11, Section 1. This is Designing a Study. Our two goals are to classify study types and then design a statistical study. So different study types. There's three study types we're going to look at. And first one is a survey, then an experiment, and then last observational study here. We're going to talk about what each one is. So first off, a survey. In a survey, data are collected from responses given by members of a population regarding their characteristics, behaviors, or opinions. So basically, you don't affect anything. All you do is you just collect data given some type of survey that maybe you've seen like on Facebook or Google Forms or whatever you have to do or through your phone. It's just some data collection. So an experiment. In an experiment, the sample is divided into two groups, an experimental group and a control group. This control group is controlled, meaning we don't do anything to it. Uh, it doesn't undergo any type of change. It's what is the same old, same old. And then the experimental group is something that you're going to change. You're adding something to it or you're changing one dynamic or two, depending on what type of experiment you're doing. And the effect on the experimental group is then compared to this control group. And you're going to compare and contrast what the difference is. That is an experiment. Now an observational study. In an observational study, members of a sample are measured or observed without being affected by the study. So you're just looking or watching something. Um, this is like a survey in the fact that you're not doing anything but you're just observing things in their natural place, in their natural order. You're not trying to change or do anything, you're just watching them as it proceeds. So classifying study types. Determine whether the situation describes a survey, an experiment, or an observational study. Then identify the sample and suggest a population from which it may be selected. So our example here, movies, a retro movie theater wants to determine whether a genre or genre of movies to play during the next year. They plan to poll 50 random area residents and ask them what their favorite movies are. So in this case, they're randomly selecting them and asking them. So we're asking them what their favorite movies are. So that's a survey. So basically you would say survey because data is collected from participant responses to some sort of poll. Now the sample is the 50 area residents. So you have 50 random area residents, that's your sample. So 50 and then people, and we just say area residents. So 50 people, which is area residents, would be your sample that you're looking at. And then lastly, what is the population? Well, we're doing 50 people of area residents. Area residents will just be your population. So your population is just those area residents. And this would be your answer to this question. So another classify study types. Um, determine whether the situation describes a survey, experiment, or an observational study. Then identify the sample and suggest a population from which it may have been selected. So a driving school wants to determine the main issue drivers face while taking a driving test. They watch and record 30 random people taking the test. So first off, they watch and record 30 random people taking the test. Basically tells us the sample and the type. So they're watching and observing this. So in this case, this is an observational study then. So observational study and that's because they are watching and not affecting anything they're not collecting a poll or anything nor are they changing anything they're just watching and looking at what's happening that's observing uh, basically as a study now the sample here is those 30 random driving or drivers so this will be 30 and this will be drivers selected so 30 drivers selected and then basically, if you're thinking about driving, we're uh, basically for the whole population is all of the drivers. So all drivers, in this case, they're trying to take a test. So all drivers trying to take that test. So all drivers that may take the test for that. That would be a suggested 
population for this specific problem. So I would like you to practice this. Um, tell me, is it a survey, experiment, or an observation study? And then actually tell me what is the sample and population as well. Pause it, I'll have an answer shortly. So what I look at is it's an experiment because we're making a new entree and then we're selecting 30 random testers to see how it compares to other things. And we're basically observing those reactions. Um, I'm saying it's 30 tasters because there's 30 random tasters of that new entree and the population is all the people who actually eat that new entree so it's this population you're driving from or if you wanted to say it's the population of all of the restaurant goers too that would also be another one you could actually use now what we want to do is actually choose a specific study type for this example so to determine whether the situation calls for a survey an experiment or an observation study will give us an explanation why so video games, a gaming company plans to test whether a new controller is preferable to the old one. A group of teens will be observed while using the controllers to see which one they use the most. So in this case, you might have thought that it would be an experiment in the first few or the first sentence, but it actually says that we are going to just observe the group with the two controllers and see which one they use the most. So we're not affecting anything. So in this case, it's just observing or an observational study. So observational and then study. And the reason why is, I'm not gonna write it down, but something you would have to explain or explain your reasoning is that teens are being observed without actually being affected. We're not changing or affecting them in any way. We're just allowing them to choose what they want. So another choose a study type here, a restaurant wants to conduct an online study in which they will ask customers whether they will be satisfied with their dining experience, which if you realize when you do that already at like Applebee's or anything else, this is a called a survey because you're conducting an online study. So in this case, you're basically polling here. So this is going to be a survey. And the reason why is customers are asked for their opinion and you're just seeing that by polling them and seeing what their responses are. So please practice this one, see if it's one of those three, and then explain your reasoning. Pause it, I'll have an answer shortly. So in this case, you'd probably say experiment because you're changing or unchanged. So in this case, um, when you're testing the effects of a new health drink, you're basically going to have an unchanged group who does not drink that health drink and then a changing group, that's something that's changing, which is they're drinking that health drink. And you're gonna see or compare what is between those two. So now identify bias in survey questions. Bias is something that um, pushes you to think in a certain way here. Um, you see it all the time in the news or in marketing. It's trying to push you to buy something or in uh, politics, they push you to look at their own ideas, whatever it is, they, there is some sort of bias there where they're pushing you to think some certain way. Um, so I like doing things without bias. For example, um, is this question biased or not? What is your favorite type of music? Does that lead you to like one certain type or not? Well, in this case, this is a good question. This is unbiased because it's not pushing you or telling you or encouraging you to look or respond a certain way. Um, and that would be your explanation why. Um, in this case, it's a nice, good question that's straightforward. There are no alternative motives behind it. So this is a good unbiased question. So identifying bias in a survey question again says, do you think that poisons such as pesticides should be sprayed on crops? This is very, very biased because it's giving you strong language. It's saying that pesticides are poisons. So this is like very strong language, um, basically encouraging you or saying that um, pesticides are poisons without you giving your own thoughts about it. And it's just kind of leading you into that, drawing you into the fact that it is a bad thing. Poisons are strong, negative way to elicit, elicit strong reactions. So in this case, this is a very biased question because it pushes you to think pesticides are really bad, just like poisons. So practice this one, see if it's unbiased or biased, and then tell me why. I'll pause it and have an answer shortly. 
So this is very biased because it's saying that the Super Bowl is the ultimate sporting right. So it's leading you into a positive direction, saying this is the best thing. I'm giving my own opinion or own bias on this. So when you see that in a question, um, if you would delete the ultimate sporting event, it wouldn't be biased. So are you planning to watch the Super Bowl is unbiased versus the ultimate sporting event, the Super Bowl, that is very biased. So designing a survey. A community college wants to determine whether college-bound students from local high schools would be interested in taking a class at the college. State the objective of the survey, suggest a population, and write two unbiased survey questions. So the objective, it says they already want to determine whether college-bound students from local high schools would be interested in taking a class at the college. So that is what we're going to be writing as our objective. So we would just rewrite all of this down right here as our objective. If you want to rewrite that, it says determine if students who plan on going to college would be interested in taking a class at that community college, if you want to make it more specific. Now the population is just those local high school students. So local high school students. Um, because that's what it says right here is local high school students um, right there and there. So it'll just be those local high school students. And questions that you could do are, are you planning on attending college after high school? So are you planning on attending, attending, college after high school. So college after high school. And I just put HS for high school. That could be very unbiased because you're just saying, are you attending high college after high school or not? I'm not. We're not trying to lead you to say, college is the best thing you can do and so forth. You just want it unbiased. Now, you could also say, would you be interested in taking a course at the community college? So would so would you be interested in taking a course at the community college? The community, so community here, community, and then college would be another great unbiased question. So please practice this one yourself. I would like you to at least think about what the objective is and the population and then write two unbiased questions. Pause it, I'll have an answer shortly. So if you tried it, the population would be company employees. Um, your objective is to determine whether her employees would like to add a rec center here at the workplace. A um, Couple questions that I came up with is, would it be beneficial? Um, how often would you use it? Not biased or at all, so it's just asking straightforward questions, not saying that, oh, would you? Would it be beneficial to have this amazing gym or rec center here? Or how often would you use this great rec center? Um, that would be biased, so in these cases, this is unbiased and straightforward questions.